Now, there might not be any football for the next couple of weeks, but don't you be thinking for one second that Eric Ten Hag is going to sit there on his chair, feet up, watching Netflix. Ten Hag is using these two weeks to plan, plan ahead, and plan properly. And what I'm going to do is run through this in a two-parter today and tomorrow. Today, we're going to focus on the restructuring that Ten Hag is going to be having meetings about this week inside and outside of the club, taking us forward, maybe if you want to call it, phase two of this rebuild. And tomorrow, I'm going to be focusing on the transfers. I think you'll enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. But let's talk about it. And let's talk about this man. I think we've seen quite a lot of positives so far in this season. Far from the finished product, I'm not trying to suggest we are the finished product. But we all know that we're not. But Ten Hag has brought this team together and bit by bit, we're getting there. But so much more is needed. Now, speaking after the game yesterday, he made it abundantly clear that he's not just going to have a little holiday during these couple of weeks off. He said this. He said, look, we're going to have many meetings. We have to improve the structures in and around the club. We will also look to the window in January or next summer already, but also to improve our way of play by making plans. So what I'm going to do now is run through what I would consider the list of things that Ten Hag is going to be speaking about inside these meetings. And obviously, obviously top of his list is saying, look, lads, we need to get the glaze out. Now, he's obviously not going to be talking about that. That's just what we're going to keep doing as a fan base. Keep going and keep going and pushing and pushing and pushing. And hopefully, I mean, as a, the Glazers will never sell Manchester United until they want to sell the club. But it feels right now, and I'm going to do a video on this during this break as to why I think now there genuinely is a chance of the Glazers selling. So keep up the protest. Keep up doing what you are doing. But in terms of Ten Hag and the conversation he's having, the majority of it, I think, is going to be around the structure inside Manchester United as well as outside. If we look at the inside structure, it's been quite a lot of change this summer. Of course, all the changes here to the first team staff. Uh, Andy O'Boyle coming in to work under John Murto. Our two chief scouts being sacked. There's quite a lot of changes that have happened. There was quite a lot of changes that still need to happen. Now, in terms of his actual coaching staff, I think Ten Hag has he's got what he wants and he's got what he needs. Darren Fletcher is down here. that He's down as a technical director, but he's I think he's kind of moved more into a first team coach position. They're alongside Eric Ramsey, who, of course, stayed from the previous regime. Those two seem to have their positions, and, and this is his main coaching staff. He's got, obviously, Ten Hag. Mitchell van der Gag is his assistant. Steve McLaren is another assistant, and Benny McCarthy, who was brought in as an attacking coach. It feels like Ten Hag has got the people around him from a coaching perspective that he wants. So I don't particularly think there's going to be too much restructuring in that sense. But the focal point of this restructuring conversation has to be around John Murto. Has to be around Manchester United's entire transfer department, which I would probably split into two separate conversations here. Number one, Ten Hag needs a transfer specialist alongside him. Now, we're hearing about Jim Ratcliffe and we're hearing about Lewis Campos. We've spoken about Paul Mitchell before. It's these sorts of people with a wealth of experience inside European football that can come in and do effectively what John Murto failed to do this summer. I don't think we necessarily failed in the summer transfer market. In terms of the signings we made, I think we made some cracking signings. But we overpaid, and operationally, it was not working like a will oiled machine in any way, shape, or form. It was slow, it was cumbersome, it was painful at times. And we overpaid as a consequence of that. Now, halfway through the summer transfer window, we sort of panicked, and we brought in Tom Keane on a temporary basis to help with Manchester United in the summer transfer window. That probably helped somewhat, but we have not, we do not have a transfer department that currently Eric Ten Hag can trust. We need to bring somebody in. I think that if we go back to this structure here and we look at this, John Murto is there with Andy O'Boyle, who was brought in as his sort of like his lackey, if you want to call it, the person who's going to take in charge of a lot of the admin. I think Andy, is, Andy O'Boyle is doing quite a lot with the women's team, actually. And I think this is outdated because we have brought in someone who is ahead of, of women's football now. I can't remember the, the name of the person doing it, but I believe we've improved that structure too. But John Murto, simply put, I don't think he can be trusted inside that. He, he can't be involved in the day to day of transfers past this summer transfer window. Eric Ten Hag has to stress that. And I think he will be stressing that in the meetings that he's having. Now, on top of having a transfer specialist, we need a scouting department that Eric Ten Hag can trust. Simply put, he hasn't got it, right? And that is exactly why Manchester United this summer did this. Anthony signed from Ajax. Lissandro Martinez signed from Ajax. Farah Malasia 
played in the Eredivisie. Eriksson, youth team player at Ajax. The majority of Man United's transfers this summer were Ajax led. It was they were either Dutch in the Eredivisie or they played for Ajax. That's that that gave Eric Ten Hag the trust that he needed, and the signings that would be made would work in his system. And he had to do that because he didn't have a scouting department that he could trust. That, for me, is a fundamental part of this rebuild that has to happen during this season. We have to build this scouting department so that by the time next summer comes around, all the work has been done and we've identified the players that we can get for, instead of paying 85 million for Anthony, we go and find somebody who's 30 million, who's not quite made it and broken through yet, but can do that breakthrough at Manchester United. We need to be better at that as a football club and we need a better scouting department to make that happen, to enable it. Eric Ten Hag, I think, will be stressing that as well. And on top of that, there's a huge conversation that has to be had about around the facilities at Manchester United and the facilities for Eric Ten Hag. Old Trafford there with a the leaky roof. Old Trafford really has just fallen by the wayside. The Glazers haven't invested in it. And now, facility-wise, we are sub-standard in terms of the elite level in the Premier League. And we used to set the standard. And look, even if you go towards Carrington, you see Carrington used to be the creme de la creme in terms of the training ground complex. But look at that as a main, build, main building and a main facility now. And let's look at Leicester's, which literally just got opened. I think it was designed by the same people who designed McLaren's F1 HQ, if, I'm, if I stand correct. But look at that, a shed, compared to that. Like a new science department, a new science building. It looks like an airport. Actually, it doesn't look like an airport. It looks more, looks more like a football pitch. It's got a roof on it. But... Carrington and Old Trafford facilities. So in terms of planning ahead, there are two huge conversations that Eric Ten Hag will have to be having in these meetings that he's having over the next two weeks. Because simply put, the facilities at Manchester United do not match the ambition of Eric Ten Hag. He wants to get Manchester United to be the best team in England, the best team in Europe. The facilities don't facilitate that. His ambition exceeds what Manchester United's current training ground offers. We need something like this. How's that going to be funded? What's going to happen in terms of the transfers? Are you going to make, is it going to turn into an Arsenal situation where you get a huge loan, put it on the club, and therefore my, I'm going to, we're, we're going to enter a period of austerity with transfers? That can't happen. That shouldn't happen. But these are the conversations that Eric Ten Hag will be having. But absolutely, I think the main conversations that he should be having are number one, right, we've got the coaching department I think I need. We've been able to get that pretty quickly. And I think Eric Ten Hag is happy with what he's got. Maybe there'll be another change here or there, but I don't think there's going to be too much. By the time Eric Ten Hag leaves the club, I can't imagine this is going to change too much. I don't know whether Darren Fletcher's now just stepped away completely from his role as a technical director, but it seems like he's more of a first-team coach. He's kind of hands-on now. But this man has to step away. He has to have the... Either John Murtough's going to have to have the... Swallow his pride and say, you know what? I tried it this summer. It didn't quite work. I'm not quite capable of doing that. I need to bring someone in about there who's going to be the, I suppose, yeah, what Adam Dawson was supposed to be, the director of football operations or the direct head of recruitment operations down there is what Steve Brown's doing. Maybe replace him. Either way, it did not work for United this summer and it has to be changed because if we do that again next summer, we're just going to, we can't afford to do what we did this summer. That was a one-off one time only, and it worked, we can't really afford to overpay on the same scale that we did this summer. So getting a transfer specialist in, an absolute requirement. Getting in an actual scouting department and building that across the course of the season is an absolute requirement. Because Ten Hag already wants to have conversations about transfers this week. And I'm going to cover that, as I said, in a separate video tomorrow. But for me, this guy is the guy to really give Manchester United a new, fresh, modern identity. We can see it in the football. Now that has to permeate through the, the fibres of the club in every fabric. And we've seen quite a lot of changes happen so far, but more needs to happen. And Ten Hag knows more needs to happen. But he's not taking time off in these two weeks. He's getting down and dirty, getting down with the plans, getting down with the plans, really weird thing to say. And for me, it kind of all, all revolves around John Murto, repositioning him inside the structure, bringing in someone who's an actual specialist, bringing in new transfer scouts, building that structure that... Because supporting a manager isn't just about giving him a ton of money in the transfer market. It's giving him the infrastructure. It's giving him the facilities that he needs. It's giving him the support that he needs to succeed. 
And there's a lot of that that still needs to happen at Manchester United if Ten Hag is really going to be successful. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But yeah, is we've got a little bit of time to step back and have these conversations about maybe what's coming ahead in, in phase two of this rebuild. Because we've seen phase one in the summer transfer window. A lot of success in the, in the signings that we made, not in how we made them and how much we paid. What's going to happen in phase two? That, I believe, is what Ten Hag is talking about in these meetings. And I think I've run through what I think is the most important in this video. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you do subscribe because tomorrow we're going to have my video out on the transfers element of it. And we can focus ahead on what could we do in January and what is needed in the next part of the rebuild for Eric Ten Hag. Take it easy.